we're asked to subtract all of this craziness over here. And it looks daunting, but if we really just focus, it actually should be pretty straightforward to subtract and simplify this thing. Because right from the get-go, I have 4 times the fourth root of 81x to the fifth. And from that, I want to subtract 2 times the fourth root of 81 x to the fifth. And so you really can just say, look, I have 4 of something. And then this something I'll just circle in yellow. I have 4 of this. It could be lemons. I have 4 of these things, and I want to subtract 2 of these things. These are the exact same things. They're the fourth root of 81x to the fifth. Fourth root of 81x to the fifth. So if I have 4 of if I have four lemons and I want to subtract two lemons, I'm going to have two lemons left over. Or if I have four of this thing and I take away two of this thing, I'm going to have two of these things left over. So these terms right over here simplify to 2 times the fourth root of 81x to the fifth. And I got this 2 just by subtracting the coefficients. 4 of something minus 2 of something is equal to 2 of that something. And then that, of course, we still have this minus the regular principal square root of x to the third of x to the third. Now I want to try to simplify. I want to try to simplify what's inside of these under the radical sign so that we can on this in this example actually take the fourth root and over here actually take maybe a principal square root. So first of all, let's see if 81 either is a is something to the fourth power or at least can be factored into something that is a uh, something to the fourth power. So 81 if we do prime factorization is 3 times 27. 27 is 3 times 9. And 9 is 3 times 3. So 81 is exactly 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. So 81 actually is 3 to the fourth power, which is convenient because we're going to be taking the fourth root of that. And then x to the fifth, we can write as a product. We can Let me write it over here so it doesn't get messy. So I'm going to write what's under the radical as 3 to the fourth power times, times x to the fourth power times x x to the fourth times x is x to the fifth power. And I'm taking the fourth root of all of this. And taking the fourth root of all of this, that's the same thing as taking the fourth root of this, as taking the fourth root of this. And let me just, I'm going to want to skip steps. So I'm taking the fourth root. I'm taking the fourth root of all of it right over there. And of course, I have a 2 out front. And then x to the third can be written as x squared times x. So it's minus the principal square root of x squared times x. And I broke it up like this because this right over here is a perfect square. Now, how can we simplify this a little bit? And you're probably getting used to the pattern. This is the same thing as the fourth root of 3 to the fourth times the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of x. So let's just skip straight to that. So what is what is the fourth root? Well, I, I, I could write it. Let me write it explicitly, although you wouldn't have to necessarily do this. This is the same thing as the fourth as the fourth root of 3 to the fourth times the fourth root of x to the fourth times the fourth root of x times the fourth root of x. And 2 is being multiplied times all of that. And then this over here is minus the principal square root of x squared times the principal square root of x. And so if we try to simplify it, the fourth root of 3 to the fourth power is just 3. So we get a 3 there. The fourth root of x to the fourth power is just going to be x. Is just going to be, is just, actually, let, I just reminded myself, we have to be careful there. It is not just x, because what if x is negative? If x is negative, then x to the fourth power is going to be a positive value. And when you take the fourth, remember, this is the fourth principal root, you're going to get the positive version of x, or really, you're going to get the absolute value of x. So here, you're going to be getting you're going to be getting the absolute value of x. And then, although, well, you could make an argument that x needs to be positive if this thing is going to be well-defined in the real numbers, because then what's under the radical has to be positive. But let's just go with this for right now. And then we have the fourth root of x. And then over here, the, the principal square root of x squared, by the same logic, by the same logic is going to be the absolute value of x. And then this is just the principal square root of x. So let's multiply everything out. We have 2 times 3 times the absolute value of x. So 2 times 3 is 6 times the absolute value of x times the principal, or the, the principal fourth root of x, I should say, minus, minus, we've took out the absolute value of x, times 
the principal root of x. And we can't do any more subtracting, just because you have to realize this is a fourth root. This is a regular square root, principal square root. If these were the same root, then maybe we could simplify this a little bit more. And so then we are all done, and we have fully simplified it. And if you make the assumption, that this is defined for real numbers, so that the domain over here, this what has to be under these radicals, has to be positive, actually, in every one of these cases. And if they need to be positive, we're not going to be dealing with imaginary numbers. All of these need to be positive. Their domains are x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Then you could assume that the absolute value of x is the same as x. But I'll just stick it right here. If you restrict the domain, you could get rid of the absolute value signs.